Let me, let, me, uh, let me start with a story that explains one of the reasons I'm here also. Uh, several years ago, I was speaking at a church. I think, I think it was in Mississippi. I was in town doing lectures at a school, and I was invited to teach a Sunday school class kind of at the last minute and then stayed uh, for the worship service. And uh, after the service, the pastor took me and a couple of elders uh, out to lunch, and in the car on the way to the restaurant, he asked me what I thought of the worship service. Now, I hadn't been intending on making any comments about the liturgy, uh, mainly because the music had been, well, limp, <laughs> infantile is another word that comes to mind. Uh, so I, I paused to collect my thoughts and then offered what I thought was a charitable appraisal. Um, I said, well, it's sad that the level of musical knowledge in our culture is such that uh, churches have to dumb down their music. What a sad thing that is. So I was sharing his victimhood, in a sense. I thought that <laughs> I wanted to identify with him in this, this bad condition we're in, rather than be a judge. Well, maybe dumb was a bad verb to use. <laughs> uh, but I was really surprised at the vehemence of his response, and I can still hear it echoing. Even though I don't remember what city I was in, <laughs> I, got, I remember how upset he was. And it's not that he thought that the music in his service wasn't dumb. Uh, it was that he thought that music wasn't the kind of experience that lent itself to the category of intelligence, uh, one way or another. Music was, in this pastor's view, rational. It was something incapable of objective assessment. And we spent about an hour and a half <laughs> batting this question around in a relatively friendly, Christianish sort of way. And the thing that impressed me most was the fact that this man evidently knew next to nothing about music but believed that he was as qualified to make bold assertions about the nature of music as was Yo-Yo Ma. Now, how had he come to the conclusion that music was all rational, that it was a matter for perception but not cogitation? It was an experience that wasn't open to the intellect. How had he come to that conclusion? Well, I don't think it was a conclusion. I think it was something he absorbed. I think it was uh, a uh, captivity to the spirit of the age. The making and consumption of music is generally assumed to be an expression of something that's deeply personal and instinctive and hence beyond thoughtful discipline. It's not something we can critique and discipline. I uh, years ago knew a young man, a very thoughtful young man, who happens to be now a Benedictine monk in Chicago, in a monastery in Chicago. At the time, he, he was a student at the University of Virginia. And uh, knew a lot about music, didn't know much about jazz, and decided it would be a good thing to learn about jazz. So he spent two years, he had an uncle who knew a lot about jazz, and he spent two years kind of schooling himself. When he first listened to jazz, he didn't like it, but he thought, there must be, there's something valuable here for me. And he spent a couple years and, 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 and really came to understand and, and, and uh, appreciate a number of aspects about jazz. Well, he was telling this story to a mutual friend, a, a, a student, I think a fellow student at UVA, and she was appalled that he would actually train himself to understand and like something that wasn't immediately uh, graspable, something he didn't immediately respond to. The idea that you would actually receive training to like something that you didn't like naturally it was an unnatural act in, in, her, in her view. And uh, I think that's, that is typical in, in our time. Um, I'm reminded of a uh, famous observation by uh, Alistair McIntyre in his early 80s book, After Virtue, where he talks about the widespread assumption that all judgments of value are expressions of preference. They're not, uh, a, uh, they're not uh, rational in any way. There's no, there's no way to think about such things. So, and I think Christians typically believe the same sorts of things about music that their materialistic and relativistic neighbors do. And this is, I think, a source, this is one of the 
sources of distress for me, that, um, the, that the understanding of music in most churches is probably not much different than, than it is elsewhere, of what kind of thing music is.